So here's the finished image, and we're going to start by showing you a contact sheet of the pictures I took to create the John Blakemore uh, inspired still life. As you can see from the uh, the file numbers, I went without deleting anything, changing anything. You're seeing the complete set of 12 images bookended by the change in pictures. And now we'll switch back to the develop module and take you through my thought processes for each image as I changed it. The first image I laid out on just a piece of um, large gray card. Uh, lights coming in from the left, as you can see the picture. And all of these objects are just things um, in from my garden. So this struck me as once once taken struck me as very contrived particularly the um the stones and the twig in the middle so i moved on to the next image and we've slightly tightened the crop we've got rid of the twig off the bottom and some of you might notice we've added an actual reflector on the right hand side to bounce some light back in but still feels very very contrived and not not cohesive enough so we moved on to the next image and we've tightened I've tightened everything up I've gotten rid of the, the stones from the middle you can see that I've still used two on the outside and I've made a bigger feature of the actual fallen petals from the the tulip make it nestle the the, the, the skull much more so so I'm, I'm beginning to sort of start feeling like this is getting towards the image that I had in my head so I went out to the garden and um, cut off this sort of very mature yellow parrot tulip placed it because this is a flat lay just placed it down on the, the edge of the piece of crockery found at the bottom of the garden and obviously the exposure has gone up a little bit probably because it was set at a, an exposure and um, it got a little bit lighter in the room as the proceedings went on. So I've I've opened it out a little bit as well, and again I'm I'm liking that, but it's not it's not what I've really envisaged. It's 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 now a little bit too sort of square and compact. So again, a couple of just little tweaks. You might notice that the um, I've moved a few of the petals around at the top of the tulip. Just felt that was a little bit um, better as I, I looked down on it. This frame, I added back in two of the stones just to sort of try and fill that bottom corner. So we're now getting back to quite a rectangular shape. Yeah, it's it's at, at this point I'm thinking, I know I can do something with this when I convert it into black and white and have a, a good old crunch at it with um, light. So here I decided there was still an element missing. It was still too compact, and you can see now in this because I've, I've slightly moved the um, the camera position. You can see the actual white card just bouncing the light back in. I went out into the garden and I just pulled up one of these lovely, lovely tulips with the, the variegated leaves, and it had a, a dying red flower on the top. Now, obviously, if I put it in with the flower still attached to the stem it would have completely unbalanced the overall picture. So cut the um, the dying tulip flower and just laid it beside the, the bulb and the stem and the, and the roots. Now I'm getting quite excited. I've, I've moved the, the yellow tulip around a little bit. I'm liking this a lot. Here we've just added in a tiny bit of sort of moss in the top right-hand corner and just tightened. Everything feels just a little bit more tightened up together which then takes us on to the finished in Lightroom black and white print, the final image that I wanted to work on in its color state. I was shooting it in camera in black and white mode, but obviously it's a raw file, so it's, all, it's going to be color. So I was seeing it as a black and white image on the back of the camera, but as soon as we get into Lightroom, they revert back to being lovely, lovely color, color images. So the first thing we did is we just crop the angle of it and then we made it a little bit smaller that's just probably a little bit too tight so we came back out again obviously those of you that have heard me speak before will know crop is my first thing setting my blacks is my next now i don't use um any of the options for detecting black point and white point clipping and all of that i just go by eye if it looks right for me i'm happy so then we pull the shadows completely up because we can always drop them back if we want but we're getting 
a lot of information in this picture. So I take the blacks down a little bit more again. So that as we'd opened up the shadows, it gives me the opportunity to take my blacks down a bit. Then my next step always is just add a little bit of clarity because that tends to brighten up the, the highlights a little bit. So I want to see that from, from here. And I chucked in a little bit of texture just for good measure. So then I'm looking at the picture and I'm thinking, this definitely needs a vignette. And so I go straight over to the presets and I grab the heavy one. We, we want to do something with that amount of grey background. That's the, the only element in the picture at the moment that's not working for me is that grey background. So we set it to the heavy preset and I can see a vignette is needed, but I've, I've already decided that at this point, this isn't the preset. So now that we've got it looking how I want, it's time to start working in black and white. So we convert it to black and white and we're just using Adobe Monochrome at this point, not... No need to go through all of the profiles because that's, I will come back and selectively darken and lighten areas later on. I then decided to go down to the post crop vignetting tool and I started playing with this and it just, so, so that's the first option I went with. Didn't particularly like that, took it a bit further and now it's just sort of, we're starting to lose a lot of detail. So played around with the feather, trying to soften it off still not doing anything for me it's actually starting to look a bit harsh and and i don't generally use that tool so you can see i'm playing around here and i'm discarding ideas as i go through them so we've brought back a little bit of the, the detail in the the outer edges but it's just it's just not right so i just got rid of it tried that one and suddenly it's it's just gone that mushy sort of matte effect you, some people really, really like. I, I don't understand it, but I don't use it. So I reset those completely. And I decided I was going to have to build my own vignette. And in this instance, it's going to be made up of um, graduated filters. So if any of you can see in there, we've got a couple of highlights uh, popping out at us. So we're going to try and calm those back down. So we've taken highlights and uh, whites out. Take the highlights down a little bit further. And at this point, we're going to see, let's just see what dehaze does. And with a little bit of dehaze, it's it's adding a nice bit of grunge. So I'm going to add a graduated filter from the side here. Obviously, it's using its old settings, which were um, increase the exposure. So we update the exposure, taking it down, taking it down a bit further, and then increasing the size of the filter. Now suddenly the, the, the light from the left is balancing a lot better with the light from the right. I'm going to have to probably sort out something in the, the bottom right-hand corner at some point. So hey, there we go. We're adding one in the bottom right-hand corner. So start adjusting the exposure till we start getting something right. And we quite like that. So now we're going to add another graduated filter from the top. So can you see how that's building up a nice vignette around the picture? We might need to come in here. haven't decided yet. So I'm going to give it a little bit more clarity and texture because this is the kind of picture, how I see it, can take an awful lot of clarity and texture. So then we go back and I decide at this point I've gone just a little bit too tight on the crop. So I've just opened it out a little bit. And now, as a result, I've decided... So we've done graduated filters in from the corners. This time I've added just a little one in from the sides. And we've taken a little bit of the highlight detail out. It's just making particularly this tulip down here an awful lot nicer. So we're playing a little bit with the hue and saturation because we've gone into the... Um, split toning at this point just to give it a see what sort of a color we can get one of my students misheard one of my other students recommendation for split toning which was 5319 5319 which uh, thanks neil is quite a nice um color but when we saw the 53 53 19 19 we quite liked that as well so i've gone and put that one in there and then i've played a little bit with the balance so we've gone to from the yellowish to a slightly more creamy one. And then I took the overall exposure down. And that's where we end up with 
our edits in Lightroom. I didn't do any spot healing because there's lots of grungy dirt lying on the the uh, card, which I'm not bothered by because I'm in the next process when we go into Photoshop, I'm going to make the overall feel of the picture a lot different than it is now. Yeah, uh, waiting for a uh, Photoshop to open. And I've also loaded in my texture from some textures that I just downloaded free from the internet. Pretty much lots of textures would have done for this. I just chose one and went with it. I've, it's not something I do an awful lot of, and I don't know everything there is to know about blending modes, but I'll, I'll go through a few here now just so you can see what's going on. And we'll get to a finished picture. So I'm going to turn the blend the um, the texture on. So because here in Photoshop, when you have layers, the top layer is the most visible. And if your blending mode is set to normal, then that's what you see. We have um, opacity and fill sliders here, and by changing those, you can actually change how much of both layers or multiple layers you can see. Um, but I'm not interested in that because it, it was just giving me a bit of a, a sort of a wishy-washy effect. On top. It just, just didn't look right. I did have a play with this, so I've just shown you having, me having a play with it. So then I thought, well, let's, let's go and see what the different blending modes do. And there are lots of books and lots of tutorials out on the internet about um, the blending modes here. So if you really want to get deep into it, go and have a, a search down that rabbit hole. But I'm just going to go quickly through each one because we'll see it. A preview of them as we go through. So dissolve has done nothing. Darken gives us that effect. Multiply gives us that effect. Now, multiply is probably not bad because then using the opacity and fill, we can decrease the overall effect of it. But I'm nothing if not lazy, so I want to see if any of these give me an effect straight off the bat. So multiply is is the one that's coming closest at this point. So now this, I see this color burn, and I'm thinking, ooh, for other images that I might be working on. I like what that's doing to certain parts of this picture. So I'll, I'll keep that in the back of my head. Linear burn just is more of color burn and useless to us here. And again, this now is starting to look a bit like what we were getting with using the opacity and the fill sliders. So lighten. Again, I'm liking some of what it does, but it's just not right. Screen, again, it's, it's, it's an interesting look, but it's not what I had in the back of my mind. Color dodge. That's starting to look interesting to me because can you see how it's breaking up the the that just drab gray card I worked on? So that's that's color dodges is, is in this instance is one I'm liking an awful lot. So let's keep going. Linear dodge, nope. Lighter color, no. But it, but again, there there are things I can see here that I might come back to at a later stage with a different picture. So we go with overlay, and I don't know what's overlay is is one that I've used in the past for, for other things. And I'm just curious as to why I'm getting some sort of color cast in certain areas in this. It just, so that's not right either. And then we've got a soft light. And suddenly I'm thinking, actually that looks pretty, pretty nice. So let's, let's hold on to the idea of soft light. Hard light, no, it's, again, it's introducing something to the picture that, that I don't like. Vivid light, again, vivid light, I'm thinking, hmm, I will come back to that at a later stage because I can, take elements of this like if picture that skull ripped out of that picture now with that effect on top of maybe softened off a bit be good linear light nah pin light difference now we start just getting into maths and it's just not liking these at all so let's go back up to soft light so there's soft light and that's pretty much it. I just saved it there. And obviously, the, the thing, when you edit in from Lightroom, so it opens up in Photoshop, so long as you close it down from here and click Save, it will now transport it back into Lightroom so that you don't have to be finding it, re-importing it. Whereas if you do Save As to a new name, Lightroom knows nothing about it. You will have to go through the import dialog box and bring this picture back in if you want to include it within your Lightroom. So that's the overall process. If you've got any questions, drop me a line and hopefully I can help you out. And I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks. Bye now.